Whoa, Jared. Hey, you okay, man? I'm good. I just... I don't know. I feel like I'm losing some of my mojo here. The show taken off, and... To be honest, if I, I, I just don't feel like Steven's available much anymore. I don't feel like... Do you just feel replaceable some days? I, I don't I, I'm just... I'm, don't worry about it. Yeah, but man, you know, we love you here. I know. I know. I, I'm just... I need to work. glad to be with you. Sorry, I had to change my shirt. Uh, the last one got got a little messy there. Went with the red. Producing with me in video studio, as always, is Jared, who is not gay. Follow him on Twitter at NotGayJared. Me at S. Crowder. I fulfill my legal obligations. Draw your own conclusions. Are we good? You were. You have to change your shirt. Um, we can't wear the same shirt. You have to change your shirt. We have Tommy Loren going to be in studio, yeah. right in that chair, live Whoa. in studio. Uh, I think it's the first like long-form sit-down interview that she's done in a while. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy to have her. Well, you're, we're, we're going to put you in the green room. Um, so Tommy Loren, <laughs> it's been a crazy busy week. This is the end of the week for Hashtag Free Crowder. I think, are we putting Morning Grinders up? We are putting Morning we Grinders up. We are putting Morning yes. Grinders up on yes. the YouTubes. Uh, so this is our final, this is the actual, obviously, live stream Thursday. Free Thank Crowder. you so much. Yeah. Hashtag Free Crowder. And uh, by the way, Long Sleeve Socialism for Figs is available in the store. Nice shirt. Oh, Appreciate I feel it. less like a fag nice. now. <laughs> We're good. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, no. We'll also. Yeah. We've been talking about terrorism this week. We got, had a long, extended episode yesterday with with uh, Professor Jordan Peterson. Today, we want to discuss the Trump budget, specifically education. I've gotten a lot of emails saying, "Hey, how do I refute this?" People are really mad. They're saying Trump doesn't care about education. So we'll get to that. And, of course, the Land of Lakes butter lady, uh, Elizabeth Warren, and her thoughts. In a little bit, then Tommy Loren. <laughs> we'll also be playing a game with Tommy Loren. Yeah. Good. Oh, All nice. right. In other news... Um, Female genital mutilation, this occurred in Michigan, uh. and the lawyers claimed that it's a religious right <laughs> in the U.S. case on the practice. Don't laugh at that. It's better if you, it's better if you laugh at punchlines than I'm just sorry. horrific. To all of 2017 to me, it's just one giant punchline. Just yeah. taking a crap on act what should be It's a very news. dark punchline. It's very dark. <laughs> Good Lord. This, this is off to a horrible start. This I wouldn't be awful. surprised if Tommy Loren just says, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of here. So this sure. happened, surprise, in uh, Michigan. Two Detroit doctors and one of their wives have been charged with subjecting two seven-year-old girls to genital cutting. Uh, there are a bunch of charges. This case isn't new, but what is new is a defense that it's a religious right uh, because apparently it was banned in 1996 for, like, super racist reasons. Yeah, yeah, totally we want to be sensitive. We want to be... <laughs> yeah. According to the court documents, the girls say that they were told... 
They were going to Michigan for a special girls trip. Uh-oh. This is what they did. They told them a special girls trip. <laughs> Yeah, special girls trip to Dearborn, Hampshire. It's just an awful cesspool of the world. That's right. Special yeah. girls trip. They're lucky they made it home. <laughs> because female circumcision is, it's long been a part of Americana. It's a part of the American culture in growing up a lady. Who could forget the classic novels that told us as much like Nancy Drew and the Quest of the Missing Clitoris. That was a good one. Oh, yeah, you got to find that. <laughs> of course, it was the ever elusive Case of the Vanishing Orgasm. That oh, was and then the ill-fated, but but uh, commercially actually very successful, not well reviewed, but commercially very successful. Nancy Drew and the pedophile rapist prophet in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> in the in the cupboard has some competition. Yes, yes, indeed. He's getting bent over on the reg. Okay, so listen, I will say this: uh, the response was was overwhelmingly even from the right and the left. Most people said, "Okay, this is this is ridiculous." This defense. Now, it's it's not ridiculous enough that a lawyer didn't try to use the defense. It's not ridiculous enough that there there aren't super far social. Uh, justice warrior leftists actually making this case. But in defense of even like the Young Turks, they talked about this. They unilaterally uh, agreed that it was ridiculous. However, we did learn in discussing this subject um, <laughs> something very illuminating. I'm so sorry. It's very illuminating regarding Cenk's own circumcision. That's crazy, right? Um, right. right. <laughs> so when I, I was six, they had me do my own anesthesia, and it was in a backyard, and <laughs> and all my relatives and family members and friends were there, and they're all watching, and they dress you up in a clown outfit because <laughs> it's like taking the girls to the stay over or whatever, right? <laughs> and so I did. The doctor asked, "Do you want to do your anesthesia?" I was like, "No, I'm six. Uh, and he's like, "Oh, it'll be fun. You do it." And then I so like I didn't place it, but I did. The, I squeezed it down, right? So I did it. Right. Um, and then he did the surgery no, right. in front of everybody in the backyard. And not my backyard. We didn't have when we lived in an apartment. His backyard. Um, and there's blood everywhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's recap this. I don't want to be insensitive, but let's recap. <laughs> Chink, you were six years old, dressed in a clown outfit. Yeah. Everyone watched as a, a doctor asked you to inject yourself with an unknown substance, which we assume is some kind of a pain medication at this point. Your guess is as good as mine. The doctor performed surgery, as you put it, not in the mosque, in his backyard. <laughs> Chate, you weren't circumcised. That was just a block party for your neighborhood clown rapist. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Now, to be fair, he did bring the Diet of Champions to the world. So, it's true. <laughs> your clown rape was not in vain. He's getting all, all right. footlongs now. Um, that's horrible, Gerald. <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> that's true. You're the worst dad joke that I've ever heard in my life. You should be ashamed of yourself. I know. We won't let you within 10 feet of Tommy Loren. Uh, Huffington oh. Post. This is, I want to set this up. This is a, I think we read this article. I think we wrote about it. I read it. this earlier this week. And then it was earlier this week. This earlier article in Huffington yeah. Post. It was, stop using free speech to be awful. It was an article written. Now, let me, uh, you, you should go read it. I always encourage you, verify. Go read the article luckily, for yourself. Luckily, it's still up. It's luckily, it's still up. The crux of the article was, uh, stop using the First Amendment to, uh, to, you know, to hide behind hate speech. Hate speech is not protected by the First Amendment. It's not okay. Uh, they did, however, now there's an addendum on the article. I, no one else was talking about this. We just found it this morning. We were going through stories. <laughs> they issued, an addendum. there's a correction at the bottom of the story now, and it says, correction, an earlier version of this story indicated that the First Amendment never protects hate speech. It does. I just, <laughs> it's basically a correction saying, <laughs> yeah, by the way, everything we put and that, 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 was, that was a lie. That was a lie. Our, our bad. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, everything that guy said is bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> and it's so funny. Is, this is why the left is, is losing, the regressive left. We were talking about this with, with Jordan Peterson. They've just been allowed to get away with things for so long, yeah. and people have just not questioned it. You yeah. know, hey, hate speech laws are necessary. And people for a long time, oh, yeah, I guess. So the First Amendment doesn't protect hate speech. Well, yeah, I guess it's not. And now all of a sudden, because of the internet because of a growing alternative media who actually do fact check these people then we're called fake news uh you know someone just said hey you know that thing you said yeah about how the first amendment doesn't protect like offensive speech yes yeah that's actually why it was written <laughs> so we're gonna you're gonna oh figure my out. god <laughs> but i'm not going out there and issuing a correction well the good news is you don't because you're fired but we are going to have to print that on there ourselves <laughs> can you imagine how busy they'd be if they actually like honestly went through all of their Articles. Oh no! I know. You got to skim. Issued yeah. constitutional <laughs> corrections. I just—it's just again. It's been allowed to go completely unquestioned for so long. Hold on, Steve. Oi, Jared, what's up? 
How you doing, mate? What are you What are you doing, Dean? How you doing, mate? I'm I'm chilling. I I'm just creating this character. No, it's this way. I found him. He's Scottish. He's a Scottish character that keeps Pablo Picasso with him, and I talk all the team on the. To pl- I can play it on the show um, for the show. Like I Dean, can do them on the show. No, we don't. I have Scottish people on the show. Just and be we know. Dean. Just, just be Dean. Jared, listen to me. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. Right. Dean. Right. Jared. No. Jared. <sighs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 we love him. We'll just, he's got to be on the. He's got to be booked like everyone else. Um, okay, let's get into the edgy. This is what people are talking about now. We're, I think everyone's kind of all just terroristed out. I get it. We're tired. I think we've said everything that we need to say. Um, so now we've moved on to Donald Trump's budget, specifically as it relates to education. Okay. Um, let me set this up for you. Elizabeth Warren released this video. Landa Lakes Butter Lady. God bless her. <laughs> She released this video and leftists are sharing it. Because um, it's you raw. To, yeah, it's raw. Super raw. It's like old MTV style. It looks like it was directed by the uh, person who created Big Brother. So <laughs> for you to be on board with this video or to agree with it or to be outraged that the budget requires two things. Okay, It uh, requires that A, you don't really understand the context of, of the numbers of, of budgets as it works nationally in state budgets. Uh, and it also requires that you believe increased spending effectively means increased efficiency, means higher quality of education. That's the premise of the video that, that you don't necessarily hear spoken about. So uh, I intend to prove that those uh, two ideas, well, not ideas. One is just you have to be ignorant. But the second one w- will prove is verifiably false. Elizabeth Warren, let's go. So I just want to talk for a minute about a few of the details here. Trump and DeVos. Remember Betsy DeVos, uh, the person the Republicans confirmed to be Secretary of Education? The big complaint was that this is a woman who does not believe in public education. Well, she just proved it. And that is the Trump-DeVos budget cuts $11 billion from public education. Oh, $11 billion. That sounds serious. That's more than $10 billion. That's more than 10 <laughs> It's one less than 12 but one more than you 10 add it up and it gets to be a big number eventually. It doesn't look like a big number. Let's put that into context. Our annual spending is uh, $3.65 trillion. Um, with an annual deficit of $443 billion. We're spending $443 billion more than we actually can afford to spend. Just hmm. put it on my tab. And uh, <laughs> that's led to close to a $20 trillion debt. That's the difference between the deficit and the debt, by the way. A lot of people don't necessarily understand that. Here's the thing. So that sounds like a lot of $11 billion because when you look at total uh, federal spending on education, it's somewhere around $82 billion that we spend federally on education. So $11 billion would be a, so- a sizable chunk out of that. But our total spending, despite what bumper stickers tell you, you know, when the Air Force has to host a bake sale to uh, buy their bombers, but our schools are properly funded, will be... No, okay. We spend more overall on education than the military in the United States. We spend overall $946 billion wow. on education, uh, compared with about $835 billion in the military. Now, what's the big difference? That includes vets, by the way, in the military. What's the big difference? Military, federal... <laughs> The vast majority of funding for schools comes from state funding. Surprise! Let me let, I'm going to let you in on a secret. Your parents went to school without a federal department of education. Yeah. <laughs> there never should have been a federal department of education. When people say you don't believe in a federal department, well, you don't believe in education? No, I don't believe in your crappy education. So $11 billion taken away from the federal, okay, $11 billion, now you're down from $82 billion. That's, that's $71 billion. Yeah, but you're still at over $930 billion. That's about 1% of total education spending. And by the way, you look at how much we spend on, on education, and they're talking about slashing $11 billion. That's a drop in the bucket. And um, we still get math. We're still going to get basic arithmetic. That's not the complaint of this video. We're still going to get basic sciences. Let's, let's actually hear the potential slashes that um, Pocahontas laments. They want to take away 22 programs that help kids K through 12. Okay, first off, she hasn't been educated on how to properly pronounce programs. What is it, <laughs> the details, programs? We need to schedule these children appropriately. <laughs> She's so affected. All right, uh, all right Mike. All uh, right. <laughs> 22 programs gone. No, first off, they're not gone. It goes back to the states. The states can choose what they want to do with these programs. Let's talk about some of these programs. She doesn't get into the specifics of programs. Just look at how to slash these programs. Oh my God, programs? You can't <laughs> slash those. No. Wait, what the hell are those? What about specific programs like the 21st Century Community Learning Centers, which have proven to be harmful? 
in 2007, and we're still uh, we're still funded. Hopefully, we are slashing the program of the After School Satan Club. <laughs> yeah. Some of these programs doesn't look fun. are going to be canceled. And we can't get into all the specifics, but there are so many absurd programs in school, and it's all lumped or un lumped under the idea of education, just like, well, we need to fund PBS because of education, just like, well, we need uh, subconscious reconditioning because of education. We need microaggression theory because of education. We just lump it all under education, and, yeah, but that can't really be a course. So I'll just put it as an after school program. Let's go to another clip. They want to take away after school programs, gone. Teacher training, gone. Class size reduction, gone. School arts programs, gone. Physical education programs, gone. Foreign language programs, gone. First off, I would be very interested to know if foreign languages includes Spanish. I think it depends on the audience. <laughs> America has no native language. We speak both English and Spanish. Yeah, well, that's good because we we're going to slash it. No, 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 oh, no. no. You can't slash the foreign languages. No. Teacher training? Isn't that college? <laughs> <laughs> Teacher training's gonna be gone. Again, we're still talking about 930 something billion dollars. These aren't necessarily going to be gone, but physical education, your future, w w dodgeball, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Dodgeball's think, gone. I think we're cutting running around in the playground. Art programs? It's not happening. What, like postmodern uh, expressionism, <laughs> yeah. underwater basket weaving? There's so many absurd ideas that are lumped under these programs. And, and here's something too that's important. When I was raised in Canada, we had something called the international uh, program. And what this was was for people who were specifically gifted in one area. Um, they were, I think it was called the international program. They were allowed to miss half a day of class. So for example, athletes, we had like Olympic level figure skaters, they'd come into school half a day late. They'd only do half of the day of school and they'd either be doing advanced uh, figure skating or advanced uh, mathematics if they were planning on going into engineering fields. Why? Because school recognized the value and hey, this person is clearly going to go into this specific field and most of what we do is a waste of time. He doesn't need to be doing <laughs> gym and Spanish and, and, and art. Let's let him do what is more effective. Half of all of our school days could be slashed. And by the way, we're not even talking about that. States will be totally fine. They can yeah, fund it. Yeah, it's like, but I'd be fine with most of the crap being done. Possibly play basketball. Like every gym, every rec center, every community yeah. organization, you're like, they think this is the only place. They are the only ones, sole providers of these kind of activities. Because it takes a village. It is the government's job to raise your child, not you. Kids yeah. do not need to be spending as much time, class time, in uh, public schools. They need to be learning. Now, the only measurement for learning is not how much time are you spending in class, certainly not yeah, if the curriculum many, is determined how many by... How hours of homework do you take home after all those hours of endless class? <laughs> all right, let's go on to the... This is, this is something they're really upset about, and a lot of you are upset about, but it's silly. Oh, and there's more. There's more. The Trump-DeVos budget would totally eliminate public service loan forgiveness. That's it. Gone. <laughs> so for those who don't know, public loan forgiveness, uh, what they're talking about is under this program, this comes from a government website, so you know it's, you know it's important. It's true. Uh, under this program, you may qualify for forgiveness of the remaining balance due on your federal direct loan program loans after you have made 120 qualifying payments on those loans while employed full-time by certain public service employers. Okay, so uh, 10 years of you haven't paid off your student loan. Here's what's so funny now. We're talking about loan forgiveness. All of a sudden, this is, this is a, a, an imperative uh, moral that we must uphold here in the United States not collecting the check. Now, you have no problem. When I, when I get a tax refund, let's, let's put it this way. When I get a tax refund, you get a tax refund. That's you giving the government a loan. Interest free, <laughs> yeah. okay? You're welcome. They've taken more money, they're giving it back to you, and they're not even giving you any interest, all right? That's what happens when you're getting a tax refund. Don't forget that, okay? And, uh, 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 okay, let's get into the student loan idea. So there was something else we were talking about earlier that I can't remember what we were talking about with the, the, the tax refund. I have no idea. Anyways, my brain's a piece of crap. Tommy Loran will hopefully waken it up. Yes, she will. Mm. Um, so right now we're talking about people who have borrowed money and haven't been able to pay it back. So the, these people, that's what I was saying. You have no problem taking loans from us, interest-free, at gunpoint, taking our money, right? There's no problem with, we're taking your money by force, by coercion. That's the only way you collect taxes, okay? That's, that's totally fine. We're okay with it. We're going to take half of every dollar you earn if you happen to have committed the crime against humanity of being successful enough. Mm -hmm. um, but all of a sudden, when it comes to deadbeats who couldn't pay back their loans over 10 years, how could we collect the tab? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to do it. You have no problem taking my money, but the person who screws up, and by the way, this the only way you pay off their loan without them paying you back, where do you think that money's made up when you forgive their loan? It's forgiven through my dollars. <laughs> yeah. You've taken my money to give to people, and it, by the way, some of these things don't come with the right stipulations. You could, you, yeah, 
you know what? I don't think your loan should be forgiven if you got a master in, 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 in women's studies. I think we should be sending the Gambino yeah. crime family to break your thumbs. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like giving Santa Claus like credit for all your presents too. It's kind of like we forgive you. We you can love us. You didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, that guy did. You stole from everybody else. <laughs> well, actually, let's go on to the next clip. Steal four billion dollars from the Pell Grant program. Interesting you should use that word. <laughs> steal from the Pell Grant program. Now, for people who don't understand, you know, the Pell Grant program, these, these, what they're really talking about is stealing from programs that provide subsidies to underprivileged people who can't afford college. So let's look at this order of events. All right, listen, we're going to take half of what you earn. If you're not making that much, we're going to take 35% of what you earn. Jeez, gosh, that's a real... That's a real kick to the balls. Well, I'm sorry, Johnny. We can't afford to send you to college. No, 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 no. Actually, since you make uh, under the threshold, we can give him a grant. We can give him a grant to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars for college because he can't afford it. Oh, here's a thought. How about, stay with me here, instead of taking half of my money and then giving him half of somebody else's money, just let me keep my money and I'll send my own kid to college. Steven, it's so much easier to boil it down to you hate poor people. You hate yeah. poor people <laughs> with the Pell Grant. You hate poor people. By the way, athletes on full scholarship get Pell Grant too. Saw so it happen. Just saying. Did it? Oh, yes. How does that even happen? Oh, yes. What is it just, we can get into this. Uh, we'll time. get into a whole other point. But the point is, again, it's steal. Okay, steal from the Pell Grant program. So what is this idea? This is the government's money. We have this money in this pool for this program. Right. And Donald Trump wanting to slash the budget here in this government gov that's stealing from this pool. Well, where'd you get it? Dumbass, let's go to the next clip. Here's the one that just is especially awful. They want to roll back the student loan subsidies for low-income college students. So what's the plan of DeVos and Trump? It's to make student loans more expensive for the students who have the most trouble paying them. And there you go. There's attributing intent. Violin you don't care about poor people. Here's something that they don't talk about. Okay, let's just let's just assume for a second that maybe Donald Trump and his constituents, they're not so stupid that they said, let's screw poor people and let's do it out in the open. They'll never see it coming, see? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, maybe they want to slash 1% of the federal education budget because they want to put it back in the hands and the control and responsibility in the hands of states who ran education for decades until the modern Department of Education. Economists will also tell you, maybe for the reason that, you know, we've seen hyperinflation, okay, mm -hmm. with student loans. We all agree on that. Yeah. But let's not try and act like there's some kind of, like, as they've tried to paint with the banking crisis, there's deregulation, there's no regulation when it comes to education, it's just big business. No, no, no. <laughs> There are tons of regulations. There is tons of money at play. There are tons of grants and scholarships. Now, what does that do? We've seen consistent inflation with student tuition costs alongside increased spending. We're spending more on education, but costs go up for students. So why does that happen? And there are economists far more brilliant than me who explain this. Okay, it's an unaffordable grant because this kid can't afford college, right? Let's say college is $10,000. The kid can afford college. He pays $10,000. Ah, but if that... Uh, that cost is $25,000, and that kid can't afford $25,000, he can only afford $10,000, there's a grant to make up the extra $15,000. That grant is sitting on the table from the government, right? The government says, well, listen, any students out there who can't afford and meet these qualifications in college, we're going to match their money. It's kind of like a 401k. They're matching the money. If you are a university or you are a college, are you going to leave that extra 10 or 15 grand on the table? <laughs> Or are you going to say, hey, you know what, let's, let's just actually, yeah. let's play fair. Let's make school affordable for kids. You can afford 10 grand. We'll keep our tuition like a patient-doctor relationship. That's what you can afford. No, if they don't overcharge tuition price, they're leaving money on the table that the next college down the road will take in the form of a grant, and that lends itself to more and more inflation. And here's why education sucks. We have not had a federal Department of Education. Going back to secondary school, we had it, uh, most of your parents didn't have a, a Department of Education. Since the federal Department of Education, people haven't gotten much smarter. You're probably stupider than your parents. Okay, standardized testing, standardized testing hasn't gotten better. SAT scores are actually going lower with increased spending. So I think maybe instead of saying that we hurt, hate poor people, maybe maybe someone could just look at this from the other side of the aisle. Just to, just give us the benefit of the doubt as far as intent. Maybe some of us look at it and go, okay, we've increased spending dramatically. We've created a federal department of education. We're spending more than ever. We're providing more grants than ever. Uh, it's unfettered, complete and total government control over the secondary the the, the land of, of of secondary education, and uh, it's worse than ever. Let's just try a different tact. Now you hate poor people. <laughs> and now it's time to discuss just why you hate poor people. The Trump-DeVos budget 
would push opportunities out of the reach of millions of students across this country. It would ruin lives. Yeah, it's all about numbers, but it's also all about our values. Ah, oh, it's all about values. Yeah. yeah, by the way, it's all about numbers. Let's get over that. 1% of the, of, of the budget <laughs> of total output in education, which has shown no discernible positive effects in education. Okay, no. so it's all about the numbers. Eh, you're lying, um, and I mean she's lying. I don't mean she's. Uh, I don't mean she is misinformed. She is lying. Yeah, just like people who who spout the wage gap, they know they they have to know they, they don't have Google. She knows she can run the numbers. Go oh 940 billion, 11 billion. Okay, well that's not really a whole lot. She knows the numbers. But when it comes to values, now maybe she spent all of her money on camera. Yes, next, <laughs> she said. Research. Well, they do have that second camera angle. That's yeah. great to switch yeah. back to every once in a while. Like, okay, Elizabeth, I really just think that you should just maybe do a Facebook stream from your phone. No. I want four GoPros. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to hire Nolan. James, and the James cameras in here, so right, right? Yeah. <laughs> the taxpayer is going to pick up the tab. Get Joss Whedon. Get Joss Whedon! But we're talking about values now. So it's about numbers. It's not about the numbers. It's about values. It's about values of not eliminating 1% so that people can be in charge of their own education. It's about the values of ignoring the success of private schools, charter schools, Montessori schools, homeschooling, just how much better they do. <laughs> it's about values. It's about the value. Yeah, values like jamming forceps in a baby's head. Values like opening the borders so that uh, people who tried to come here legally and have spent years and years toiling away to join the great experiment that is the United States of America get screwed in the process. Values like being understanding and validating the world of people who blow up children at Ariana Grande concerts, values that say that the idea of men and women and biological sex is just a figment of your imagination. It's not about the numbers because you're wrong on those, Miss Pocahontas Warren. Now all of a sudden the left wants to pivot to values. Okay, let's talk about those values. I'm easy to find any leftist, Elizabeth Warren, or maybe Wendy Davis wants to trot back in here. We'd love to have you back in. Good luck on that presidential run. Come on in to Louder with Crowder or email uh, Jared at louderwithcrowder.com. We'll talk about those values. But coming up next, Tommy Loren. She's a tremendous value. How the hell is Louder with Crowder continuing to grow when we distinctly throttle and demonetize their channel? Are they reaching their viewers somewhere else? Are they doing a Patreon? And where the hell is Tranny Bane? I don't know where he is. I told him it was urgent. Oh, you don't seem to know much betting, do you? Where is that he, she? Speak of the devil, and Z shall appear. What the hell is going on? Your plan is going as expected. Oh, really? Does YouTube look advertiser friendly right now? Your plan of partnering with CRTV, it didn't work, my friend. Now your month club members are supporting Lana with Crowder off site, but still running around YouTube comment section, raising awareness and disrupting our safe spaces. Tell me, how exactly does that help us? YouTube, get rid of dissenting opinions. Leave us. No, stay, I'm in charge. Do you feel in charge? Let you monetize a small fortune. And this gives you power over me. What is this? Your YouTube and infrastructure have been important till now. Who are you? My club is YouTube's reckoning. Viewer supported content to not only allow us to reach them directly off site, but simultaneously disrupt the bubble. We've all been living in. It is Mug Club outside of YouTube that allows the free content to operate within YouTube. You are pure evil. Mug Club is necessary evil. Glad to be back. So uh, glad to be. Well, I, so we haven't introduced her yet, but don't 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 show don't, her. Don't don't don't. We have don't, had questions oh! from the audience. Ah, oh, geez, you already revealed it. Uh, First off, uh, you can you know who she is. Damn she's controversial. Me, uh, obviously, it. she's in the news quite a bit. You can't avoid her. Well, I guess you could technically. It'd be difficult. Um, first off, 
Facebook.com slash Tommy Laren, L A H R E N, right? I got the right. Like that, Laren. That's how it's pronounced. Like, like, I never knew, and now I feel there I you feel go. Blind. How's it pronounced? It's pronounced Laren. You just Laren, like laryngitis. There you go. That's the first yeah. thing a guy wants to think when he thinks of your name. Well, you know. Like laryngitis. Well, you know, Wale calls me Tammy Lauren. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but Wale and I have an ongoing beef. Wait, who's Wale? Wale the rapper. Come on, Steven. I don't know who Wale. I was thinking of the robot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or or as, as, Elizabeth, as Elizabeth Warren pronounces it, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that yesterday when she was talking about the budget? She's like, these, uh, these details of this program. I'm like, what? What? What is everything about her is fake? <laughs> okay, so no, what's going on with Wale? I'm sorry, I'm not aware. But before well, we get to that, do you appreciate that we didn't do the Fox News leg chair? See, look at the angle. Oh, I didn't even. We're, okay. ge we're gentlemen here. Okay, well, that works for me. Although Dick Morris tunes in, and you're going to get hell for your ankles. Go ahead. Okay, well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I get hell for almost everything, Stephen, yes. so just line him up. But no, by hell, I mean he's going, to, he's going to contact you incessantly and ask you about your ankles. Okay. He likes feet. Oh, well, you learn something new every day. Yes, yes. But as I'm teaching about Wale, yes. so Wale is a rapper. Okay. Wale came out with a song called Smile. Um, okay. He referenced me as Tammy Lauren. After the fact, he tried to say that that was a diss by calling me Tammy Lauren, but in reality, he just really didn't know how to pronounce my name. That's okay, though. Um, it was kind of a diss song about Donald Trump. He wanted to throw me in so, there, too. So, wait, on. What was his diss? I'm hearing some kind of sound here. Does someone else have the headphones on? Or uh, no. does someone have a... This is the show. You can't edit this. This, is, edit this. this is different from uh, the place Turn in the show. Turn your headphones off, spoken. maybe. My headphones. Just, my headphones yeah. are... I turned them off. Oh, you oh, turned them off. off. Okay, that's it. So, the, why did he go out of his way to diss you? Because I'm critical of the Black Lives Matter movement, and I was in this whole song. This whole song is kind of about we still need to smile even though Donald Trump's our president. And he mentioned me, said, you know, Tammy Lauren. He's going to okay. Lauren Hill me because I'm miseducated. Now, is Lauren Hill, did she, is she deceased? I don't think so. I was going to say, what's the, what's the threat? I have no, well, you'd have to ask Like Wale. Lauren Hill, is it like she was, she was put in the body bag or something? Or just like Lauren, no, <laughs> no, like Lauren Hill, I just started at the grocery store. Well, that's not well, a you'd threat. Well, you'd have to ask Wale about that. But he <laughs> says, you know, I'm a miseducated, and he thinks that I would not like the color of his face, which is obviously not true, but doesn't really matter. What is really the color matter. of his face? Well, I think it's black. I think it's, well, technically, that's not a color. That's a shade. So right well, away, Ooh. Wale is not very good with the misstep. disses. He's not accurate with his color spectrum. Well, you should tell Wale that. We have this ongoing beef, but he trolls me on Twitter. Every time I tweet something, he trolls me. It's okay, though. How does, he, how does, he, how does a rapper troll you? I well, don't you understand. Know. Like, I understand, like, the, okay, the Tupac, the Biggie beef, you know, East Coast, West Coast. I understand Eminem, you know, Tom, Jay-Z, whatever it is. I don't really understand how Wale says, you know what? My career move, I'm going to go after that, that, that blonde chick who talks about politics. Well, this is my second rap song, though, Stephen, because I was in my first rap song is actually my voice in the song. It was a Pusha T, Jay-Z song called Drug Dealers Anonymous, and I have a wonderful line there from my final thoughts on Beyonce's Super Bowl performance where she saluted the Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. So there's a line of my voice in the middle of that song. So that was rap song number one. Now I'm in rap song number two with Wale. And I think there's a third one on his new album in which he also references me. So I've been in three rap songs at this point. You, you know how I know you're not a hip hop fan? You call them rap songs. Well, rap it's, tracks. This, yeah, say. tracks. They don't say, they're not like, this is my, <laughs> this is my diss song. Diss track, it's a diss, my diss track, track. But it's a rap song. I don't think they say song. I think they okay. try and distance themselves from uh, formal musical training as much as possible. Okay. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I've never heard it referred to as a rap song. I've heard it like, my new track, my new, my new B-side, my new okay. mixtape. Your beats. Your beats. Beats by Dr. Dre. Horrible headphones, by the way. Very overpriced. Okay. Please don't tell me you have those. <laughs> no. Okay, good. I can't, I can't say that I do. All right, good. Well, this is off to a good start. Everything we've talked about is relevant. So, you have been... <laughs> Obviously, there are things you can't talk about. We all yeah. know this when it, when it comes to kind of uh, 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 shifting employment opportunities. I'm trying to mm -hmm. tread as carefully as possible. So you haven't really done a lot of like long form interviews like this since kind of the, the, the fallout. Uh, Not many, no. Because, uh, I mean, you still appear on cable news and issue, but it's, it's, it, they deal in sound bites and you can't really get yeah. to the meat of it. So what has it been like with the backlash? Would you say it's been 50-50 support uh, from fans? I, your fans are always going to be supportive, but mm -hmm. what is that like as a young person dealing with kind of a public backlash that, you know, occurred? 
I guess the backlash was immediate, but I've seen my numbers on all platforms grow from this. Yeah. And I think I've attracted a lot more fans because of this. Mm -hmm. And not just because they agreed with what I said, but because they agree with the fact that I said it. Yeah. And they appreciated that I stood up for myself and that I don't operate off talking points. And I'm really willing to risk everything for really what I believe in. So there's a degree of authenticity there. Yeah. People seem to like that. So when you say, when you talk about it, this was the, obviously the it. controversial <laughs> comments were the the, uh, the the abortion comments, right? right. On the but I wouldn't even call them abortion comments. That's the thing that frustrates me the most about this is I do think as a conservative, you can be pro-choice and anti-abortion. Sure. I do, from a limited government perspective, that is my take on it. I have always told folks that I am fiscally conservative and I'm socially and more moderate. That's kind of a trademark of the millennials in general, I think. Yeah. But I've been very forthright about that. It's not that I'm pro-abortion. It's not like I'm Lena Dunham out there saying, oh, you know, I really wish I could have had an abortion. No, that's yeah. not me at all. I'm very anti-abortion. Personally, I just, that's where I stack up as far as government intervention. Yeah, Lena Dunham, you're, that's her new uh, Christmas single. That's her track dropping is, I want an abortion for Christmas. Yeah, no, it's well, not then, very no. catchy and rhyming. She can see it there coming down the she stairs. Tries. And an abortion <laughs> hero standing there. Uh, for people who don't, for people who catch the reference will love that. People who don't think this is going off the rails quickly. Both are probably right. So I did, I read some interviews after that. Because I'm not entirely clear, I'll be honest. So okay. you are, are you pro-life? Are you, because the issue comes down for conservative, I'm pro-life, mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as, okay, are you terminating a life? And that kind of determines generally your worldview. Now, if you don't believe that you're terminating a life, then you can be, you know, pro-choice, I guess it's called, but saying, okay, you don't think the government should pay for it. Um, is, is, is that your view? Is that how you would categorize it? I don't think the government should pay for it. I've been very vocal about that as okay. well. I always say I don't care what you do. I don't want to pay for it. I don't want taxpayers to pay for it. So defund Planned Parenthood. That's totally okay with me. I sure. will stand up for that all day long. I, in my personal life and with my friends, I would be pro-life like you are. But I have this weird mix of conservative and libertarian views in mm -hmm. which I just don't think it's the government's place. But there's more gray area there. That's why this issue is frustrating to me because it's not black and white. Right. I mean, after the first trimester, it's a different story. Okay. So for me... So you would say after the first trimester, it's, it's ending a life. Yes, I, I do believe that. Personally, okay. I do. But I just think it's a conversation that needs to be had. And I got to tell you, my worldview on this has evolved. I have a friend who's a police officer. She works in crimes against children. And she's seen nine-year-olds that were raped and impregnated. And that changed her worldview. I've heard stories like that. That changes mine. People can get pregnant at nine years old? Yeah. You ever heard of nine-year-olds getting pregnant? Yeah. I, I have. Really? Heard of that. Yeah. yeah. It's rare. Is that but the hormones in the milk thing? I've read about that. <laughs> Stay away from vaccines. Us. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the vaccines. Now you, little Cindy got a got her vaccine for polio. Next thing you know, she's having triplets. Ah, damn, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone here whose daughter Cindy, who had a vaccine for polio, you know the odds are there's someone who fits under that description and had triplets, and we are going to get We're going to get letters. Thanks, Tommy. Bringing sued is still also go. a very sensitive word, Steve. Can I not use the word sued? All right. <laughs> yeah, I think you can use that word. I can use the word. Use whatever word you want. I can use the word Do you sued. know what we, just, we do with lawsuits? We get them. We just... Like dandelions. Yeah. We, just, we don't do anything with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we think that could come and bite us. But, uh, okay. So so that was... Now, the criticism was, to be fair, from other people, and not to just focus mm -hmm. on this, I just want to clarify, because I, I wasn't entirely clear um, that, obviously, people had seen you on your show, like what you just talked about with Elena Dunham, kind of railing against people who were uh, pro-choice activists. And mm -hmm. so they would argue the issue was with consistency, you know, so maybe you misrepresented your views. Do you feel that that... Some people there, their argument would hold water or they just aren't paying attention? Well, to they weren't paying attention. They weren't watching my show because okay. I would say that I was socially moderate almost on a weekly basis on my show. And then beyond that, it was written in the New York Times that I am pro-choice. That came out in December. So it's been yeah, well documented. but nobody documented. reads them. Well, there you go. <laughs> Again. But I will say, I understand where they're coming from. But for me, this, again, this is not black and white. I have gone mm -hmm. against Lena Dunham for saying, I want an abortion. Someone that's going to glorify abortion, I'm not okay with that. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't think that that should be mainstream. People that are going to march in the streets for free abortion, I'm not okay with that either. So yeah. I would rail against those folks. But I think that part of being pro-choice, and maybe those aren't the best words to use, but is right. acknowledging that there is a choice. When you say, oh, I just love abortion like Lena Dunham does, you're not acknowledging that there's a choice and a very difficult one, one that I've never had to make, one that I hope I would never have to make, and I yeah. hope my loved ones would never have to make. But you can be against 
government-funded abortion, and you can be anti-abortion, but still believe that it's not the government's place, especially within the first trimester. That's where I fall on that. Right. Um, well, we know one thing for certain. Lena Dunham has never been at risk of requiring a you termination mean, of pregnancy. Yeah. Well, she's lost some weight Maybe from Wale, because they like them thick. Um, <laughs> so now you have, a, you have a new gig. Uh, kind of. New, okay, kind of. So what is this? We read that you're, you're, you're uh, a spokesperson for a pro-Trump... Is it a PAC? Is it an organization? Yeah, it's an organization. Okay. It's really grassroots trying to promote this president's agenda. So it's less promoting the president and more promoting the agenda. Okay. The reason I voted for Donald Trump. So for me, guess what? I see that there's a gap there in other folks that are in this world. You mm -hmm. got your Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, Newt Gingrich, others. They're great, but we need some young people to say, guess what? I support this president. I support his agenda. I think I can help with that. I think it can help with social media. So I joined the effort. I think the mainstream media is doing their best to torpedo this president, and uh, I think we need to bring the fight to them, and I'm happy to help with that. Yes, so they don't believe in torpedoes because nonviolence. So just yes. really mean gossip. That would be <laughs> a better go. analogy. Really mean <laughs> things, very yes. bitchy. Um, you know, like like rumors about butt pads and what have you, those kinds of oh, things. Yeah. That's what they say. Uh, uh, so, say about <laughs> so uh, let me, uh, you know, this, this, my butt is a pad, by the way, for those who it's don't know. It's so true. Yeah. 33 waist, and they have to buy 36 to 38 pants. That's not a joke. It's an ass for wow. books. Yeah, it is. That sounds like something Wale might yes, be interested in. Yes, something like Wale, yeah. A <laughs> uh, little known fact, uh, a lot of these rappers are closeted homosexuals. Can't get enough of the male butt, uh, apparently. So, Wale, <laughs> you know where to find me. Or not gay. We wouldn't want you. Yeah. No, but Spindly. Pass. No. Pass. I think they'd pass you around like a, a no, bone at a Ron, Ron Paul rally. Move on. Um, so, we're talking, so, it's, so it's not your full-time gig? Because no, no. I was going to ask you, you know, going from an, what would you have called yourself, opinion journalist? A uh, political commentator. Okay, political commentator. Yeah. Same kind of thing, but you were always straightforward opinion. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, I've always been that way too. Uh, I just that's the one thing with Fox News where it was like, well, fair and balanced. I'm like, hold on a second, that's fine as long as people who are opinion journalists admit that they're opinion journalists. Right. I've always tried to be straightforward about that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, like NPR, they don't admit it. You know, that's my frustration with the mainstream media. If you want to be a liberal, just say, like, guess what, guys? I'm a liberal. Yeah. But don't tell me that you're neutral and then cry when Donald Trump is elected. No, exactly. If Anderson Cooper just came out and said, listen, I'm a liberal atheist who lives in the West Village, okay? And as soon as I'm done with this segment, I'm going to go, you know, sleep with Wale back at my pad. I'd have no problem with Anderson Cooper. The problem is when he goes up and he tries to act as always objective. That's mm -hmm. always what I've said. It's, it's the bias by omission. But my question is, since you were an opinion journalist and now you are working with this pro-Trump kind of advocacy group, you were, you were pro-Rubio mm -hmm. in the primaries, mm -hmm. so you were critical of Donald Trump, then you supported him. Mm -hmm. um, is, is, I mean, is that, is that tough, being able to say whatever you want, kind of criticize wherever you want, and now obviously... There are certain things that you, you, you can't broach on if you're an ambassador for a pro-Trump group. No, not really, because, again, it's a pro-Trump group, but it's more pro-Trump because it's pro the silent majority, pro grassroots, America first. That's what I signed up to do yeah. is to be the voice for the silent majority and to help advance that message. This isn't just about being a Trump cheerleader. Right. So that's not my job description. For me, it's about the Americans. It's probably their them. job description, though. I mean, like if Trump comes out you know, and he says, like, well, we're not going to get Mexico to pay for the wall, and you say, well, this is crap. You know, I thought he was going to do it. They're probably not going to be super happy about it, right? I got freedom, though. I mean, I would never lock myself into something where they right. say, oh, you can't say that, you can't say this. No, that's not really my game. So, so for me, if he does something, I'm still going to criticize the president. This is more about Americans for me than mm -hmm. it is about President Trump. I just happen to think that President Trump cares about average, everyday Americans. How would you rate his performance thus far? Again, as someone who was a Rubio supporter and now sure. you know, Donald Trump. Sure. I'm happy with it. We've got work to do. We certainly do. I think that you know Congress needs to play ball. As well. I mean, they're yeah. not blameless in this, but I like It'd what we're doing. It'd be hard for them to play any kind of ball, by well, the way, with Congress. Just, it's just, it might as well be called just the knee surgery convention. Yeah, well. But I understand, the, I understand yeah. the analogy. I think, though, that the president has done well. There's more things I want to get done. I want that wall. Okay. But I'm impressed thus far. Yeah. Uh, where do you line up right now with, I mean, obviously this week, terrorism, awful, at an all-time high. Uh, how do you feel about his response? You know, calling them, there was some controversy, calling them losers. Yeah. Well, it called you also don't like losers. Ariana Grande. Well, I've never been a fan of Ariana Grande. I know, Grande. it's totally irrelevant. And she licks <laughs> donuts, for, right? I'm, I Didn't know. She like, licks donuts? donuts and she hates Americans. Who eats donuts in 20 I can't remember the last time I had a donut. You're missing out. You no. are not. Yeah, Stephen comes up and he's like, I, I just don't get this whole donut thing. I don't get the whole donut the, the thing. Donut, it's not a thing. It's like. And I don't get shops that sell donuts and kolaches together. But you call What's it, that? You, you refer to it as the donut thing. It's like uh, this whole movie thing. That's is that catching on? Is that a thing? The donut. I, I feel like donuts was donut like it was an evolution thing. of bread. They're like, okay, here's bread. It's kind of bland. 
let's add some sugar. How and now we have brownies. Now we have everything else, and donuts just don't get me excited. Uh, you've, you've, you've been Am I surrounded by donut people? Donuts. Are you a donut person? Is that what I'm hearing? Who's not a donut person? Exactly. I think I met my first non-donut donut person. It's disgusting. Yeah, I thought everybody liked donuts. You're e it's a whole. You're eating an absence. You can eat the whole too. <laughs> That's the thing too. Want. I want to be like, oh, well, you have a That's smart stuffed business. donut holes. I'm like, what the hell is that? It's you're capitalism. I mean, it's nothing. No, so it's capitalism. It's, nothing it's like you sell the something. donut, then you sell the whole separately. Yeah. That's a great business move. I get, well, it's like chicken wings. That's how it started out. No one wanted to eat the chicken wings in Buffalo. And they just, these guys said, hey, we'll take all your free wings. And then everyone got wise to it. And they started overcharging for chicken wings. Um, See? So, okay, what's, what do you, what is your, your plan? We're going to play a game here after this break. What's your plan going forward? Uh, since this is a side gig, mm -hmm. do, you, does, do you know? Or are you just floating? I don't know yet. I really don't. Maybe I'll go back to TV. Maybe I'll just take over online some more. We'll see what's next. I think there's probably a book in the works. So you just use the word take over online. You throw that in there. That's yeah. going to get some people mad. What do I say that doesn't make people mad? Well, I'm saying like, you'd be like, ah, you know, I'll, 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 I'll cooperate with people online. I'll partner with that. I'll do well <laughs> online. Like, take over. I already do well online. Yeah, you do well online. Yeah. So take over, like, what do you mean? Like, who, who, are you going to have just people, like, chained up in your front yard? No. On chokers? Yeah, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. It's going to look like Mad Max. No. We fought. We fought a ton. Is that your next segment? No, I just, I kind of want to be everywhere. Yeah. I want to hit the mainstream a little bit, so like agitate God. them a little bit. No, <laughs> the I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, not quite that much. That's a little, that's a little Like Jay-Z. Well, you know, Jay-Z. He's everywhere. I, exactly. It's the Illuminati. That's what it is. He gives them godlike powers. Okay. Well, Jay-Z and I have a history, too. It's I know. You told me that rap track. Yeah, where you yeah. use your, your, your thing in there. So. Yeah, he raps about me, too. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's sad. He's got so much money. He's got so yeah. much money, but you make him mad. Well, did you know Does that, that give you some satisfaction? It do, well, did you know that his wife, you know, his Beyonce? Wife. She's super slutty. <laughs> okay. Well, she, you can say it, not me, because the, oh, the is. beehive has hey. already come after me more than I can. <laughs> okay, hold on, beehive, hold on. And when I, and when I say super, okay, I'll hold that thought, what you okay. were going to say. When I say super slutty, um, or oh, let, me, let, me, let me be more gentle with it. Beyonce acts like a whore. Now, when I say acts like a whore, I didn't say she is a whore, acts like a whore. The, 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 and, I, and, I, and, she, and people claim that she's not. By the way, okay. no straight man calls her Queen Bee. Okay? No, I've had you someone you like, and I you, yeah, how can you insult me as Queen, queen Bee? I'm like, well, you're gay. Um, but when I say acts like a whore, I misinterpreted this. The... <laughs> that with Beyonce. I saw that and I was like, oh, that seems like some sort of an invi sexual invitation. Right? One can, can one, that and then she gets, yeah. on the, she gets on, you know, on her stage, she gets on that liberator. And it's it's almost the same move, only with a, a, a geometric change. She does this. That, <laughs> that's like the Bernie Sanders version of Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> All the single ladies. That's the point. The point is like Dialogue. I think that is so. I we wrote an article and Courtney did. Beyonce, it's not because you're black. It's because you act like a whore. And we had gifts of her doing that. Yeah. Caught hell. Oh. Um, but Jay Z didn't write about me. So, yeah. but continue with your story. Well, That's Beyonce, my opinion. Well, Beyonce, I decided to speak out against Beyonce and, you know, saluting the Black Panthers and, you know, the giant F you to law enforcement. Yeah. I decided to speak out about that and my final thoughts. And, uh, you know, she seemed to notice and okay. she actually asked to buy those final thoughts and use them on her world tour, in which we said no. Really? So, you could have made a pretty penny. They have a lot of money. Well, I wouldn't have. My former employer would have. That's okay. another story. No, we don't mention them. No. We don't mention former employers. Nope. We don't even know about them. We don't them. even know. Who are they? Could have been a gas station. Who knows? We don't know. Gryffindor we doesn't talk about them. Most people actually don't know. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a dig. Not very nice, but go ahead. So we said no. Okay. Not going to use my final thought. So then instead she just puts out some of my tweets yeah. at, at select concerts. That seems pretty immature. So, seems like there's a lot. Seems like there's a lot of drama with the with the tweets and with the with the the, the rap songs, as you put there, them. There are, do you ever wish there were less drama? Because because it's kind of like. Do you ever feel sometimes as though maybe maybe uh, you're in a, a prison of this kind of drama because that's what creates the traffic and that's a lot of the time why people listen. But then it gets exhausting. Of course, it gets exhausting. Yesterday, yeah. I wore a shirt, or the other day, I wore a shirt that says "Black Guns Matter." My right. friend Maj Toure has an organization called Black Guns Matter. It's about training, especially in the inner cities, young black men on how to use weapons effectively and efficiently and safely. Yeah. Second Amendment stuff. So I support that. I wouldn't know anything about controversial shirts. Yeah, you wouldn't. Um, but I wore that, and then everyone now they said, "Well, she's been seen in L.A. with a black man." 
after oh. I wore a Black Guns Matter shirt. What does that matter? I, well, I'm just saying, like, it doesn't matter what I do. If I wear something like that, supporting you a You just go back and say, like, what? Like, I wouldn't hang out with a black man? Well, they've, said that, to me. they've said that to me before, too, though. <laughs> they said that I'm trying to use them many times. Seems to me that short of an actual sex tape with a black man, you're not going to please them. Probably not. And then they'll just be like, well, look, clearly she's not a racist. We were wrong about that. But this is disgusting. I think they would still call me a racist, to be honest Really? With yeah. I don't know. Or anyone that associates with me is an Uncle Tom. That's true. But that's true of any black person who's not liberal. So I didn't know, yeah. I didn't know what kind of by proxy. They are liberal, though. My friend, I have another friend in the rap game, Charlemagne. I just, I just feel very uncomfortable with saying rap game. Yeah. Let's just, like, let's, let's, <laughs> all, let's act, because I feel like we're trying to we're be gonna a part. We're going to lose so many fans. We're going to lose so many fans if we don't use it properly. Let's, let's just act like the white people we are and be like, those rappers there, see? <laughs> that way we're being authentic. <laughs> you know but it is authentic. I actually love rap music. Yeah, so, so do I. I'm, I'm a huge underground hip-hop fan. If Immortal Technique weren't just such a dumbass, like, pe like I, Weird Science, Mortal Technique, uh, all this stuff. I've, I've been following hip-hop for a long time, but I still, I, I haven't earned the right. Okay. Sorry, continue. <laughs> what, where's, what's the right? How do you earn it? I, mean, I, I just, you know, I'm not in the club. Okay. You know, I haven't been shot yet. In the club? <laughs> no. I haven't been shot yet, neither of you, so... Have you, have you given yourself any, your own tattoos? Yeah, that's, I that's my own tattoos. That's a real professional. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, there is nothing constable in prison to do other than desecrate the flesh. That's a Cape Fear reference. I guarantee you, no one in this room gets it. No. Nick DiPaolo would. Okay, sorry, continue with the story, and then we're going to move on to the, to the game. I think that story was done. Oh, okay. I think okay. it was finished. All right, there you go. Uh, now thoughts. I don't feel so bad. Well, okay, so I did read an interview. Was it, was it Playboy? Am I mistaken? I've done a lot of interviews, but I yeah I okay. did do a Playboy. I don't say that to be so, I mean I don't say that to be so, salacious. But by the way, actually my wife we had to get a Playboy for a sketch here. She was like, "This is remarkably tasteful compared to what I thought," because you know now fourteen year olds find the most depraved pornography you could possibly yeah. imagine. It's yeah. Playboy, it's like it's ah, they're breasts. <laughs> but I mean, I think we should also clarify. I was in Playboy in an article. In an article, in fully, yes, in an fully an clothed. Yes, in an article. Yeah. That's that was why because that actually would have determined if we made this the Fox News leg chair. Okay. If it weren't an yeah. article, if it were a full Playboy spread, there would be a glass table here, and this would be aimed that way. Okay. Because we know we get a rating spike. Sorry, there they don't. You, I mean, you, you know, everyone knows what I'm talking about. We I mean, all know. We all know. We all know. We all know. Bill O'Reilly's office reeks of sexual assault. So um, I did read in this article <laughs> that you said you wanted to, because I've always seen it you know, more serious, obviously, as someone who's, who's done comedy my whole life. Um, you mentioned like you wanted to take part in a right-wing sort of John Stewart show, Daily Show, something mm -hmm. like that. So what, yeah. what, 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 have you done comedy before? What's the, the mindset behind that? Because that's a big shift. I think just being a smart ass. People that watch my full show know that more than anything, they think I'm angry. I'm actually more of a smart ass than angry. Okay. So I think that there needs to be more you do it, but we need primetime conservatives yeah. that are going to do And now they've, they've lost their minds anyway. I mean, look at Colbert. He's lost his freaking mind. I still think he's funny. He's not you anymore. will need writers, though, if you do that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, John Stewart has like 27 writers. One of them got me my start in comedy. A guy named Barry Julian was hilarious. Wasn't even that liberal in Canada. But when I saw him, when he went up there and was accepting the Emmys, I was like, that's the Canadian comic. <laughs> so many writers. So, okay. So you do want, so not so much like really, I guess, a comedy show, but just more of a snippy show. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Having fun with it. Have, yeah. Have fun. Say what you yeah. want. Swear if you want. Yeah. Every now and then bring out like the old, like, like the old Roger Ailes reference. See, to make people immensely he, uncomfortable. He kind of. Oh, that's he, right. He, he died. I swear to you, I forgot he died. I swear to you that I forgot about that because remember <laughs> we were gonna have the puppet. I. This is true. Before Roger Ailes passed away, we were building a custom Roger Ailes puppet. And then now for sketches, we can't do it now. We can't we do it. Now. It'd be like the ghost yeah. of Marley's past. It would though. be like It'll the ghost like, of Marley's past. I swear to you, that's not trying to be distasteful. We were we were in the process of building a Roger Ailes puppet. Hundred percent true. And then when he passed away, we're like. Cancel yeah, the puppet order. Too soon. All right, so we're going to play a game when we get back from this Make break. It blue. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, 86, that puppet. Um, well, go, I hope it goes well. So we're going to play a game then when we come back, and it'll just be, it'll be fun, and uh, it'll allow both, it'll allow you to show your, 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 your chops, and uh, warning, oh, it'll probably be offensive. Okay. Uh, not to you, but to everyone else. So we'll be back with Tommy Loren, Facebook.com slash Tommy Laren, like laryngitis. And so, as we get very near the end of this now, that concludes, 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 I'm not going to lie, 
Time to learn there was a cocktail in here. She made me do it. No, she didn't. She was sober. Concludes our week of hashtag free Crowder. Hope that you've enjoyed it. People who have been watching, people who watch on CRTV, who are Mug Club members, thanks so much. Uh, we also have Morning Grinders, right, Not Jared? Yeah, that's right. Morning Grinders will be out. Well, tomorrow. I guess they'll, well, tomorrow, well, they, might, they might get it Saturday on YouTube. That's We're not entirely sure because yeah, this sure. show will be uh, archived tomorrow. So Morning Grinders with Jared and Courtney. And uh, again, thanks so much. We appreciate the support uh, with YouTube squeezing conservatives. We've talked about it. Lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club. The free show that you've seen every day this week is available for $99 annually, $69 for students, veterans, uh, or active military. You also get access to the whole CRTV lineup. Uh, we just wanted to, to, to give it away as much as possible because we believe in the we believe in the product. We're doing this every single night, and we're hiring more people. So if you want to be American, buy American, well, uh, we actually hire people here. You pay for Not Gay Jared's horrible drug habit. So enable him. Thanks. Please. Um, we can't thank you enough. It's been a great week. Thanks so much to everyone who's been on this week. Gavin, uh, Jordan Peterson, mm -hmm. Tommy Loren. Who else do we have on this week? We had, who do we have Monday? Monday, Monday, Monday. Gosh, I can't remember. These weeks all kind of go together. They bleed oh, together. Mark Duplass. Oh, yeah, Mark Duplass. Duplass. Thanks so much, Mark Duplass. Great guy. Yeah. So um, if you do like this and you want to support the content, you want to see more big YouTubers and more other names coming, you know, uh, to CRTV, Mug Club, lottoscrider.com slash Mug Club. Sign up. You get this wonderful hand-etched mug. And uh, you get to hell. watch the show. And you get access to all the other shows. So uh, that is... The end of our hashtag free Crowder Week. By the way, you still get the free show once a week for those who are still uh, cheapskates and can't afford it. You still get the free Thursday show. You still get a clip a day. But, um, well, you get that for as long as the other people who support the content and join Mug Club exist. And then, if if because if not you, who? If you don't do it and then the next guy doesn't do it, then 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 just the whole thing ain't going to look right. So, lotterwithcrowder.com mm. slash Mug Club. Tower of cards. See you there. Never mind. Next Apparently, time. Tommy Lorenz won't take take part in the pogo dance. All right, oh. that's one demerit. So, uh, <laughs> Facebook.com slash. Is there anything whiter while we're talking about Wale? Wale followed by demerit. Demerit. <laughs> You're going down in my uh, my uh, my book. Um, this is a game that we have here. So, have you, you said that you've never played this before? Utter nonsense. No, never I have played not. It before. Have Could, not played this. We're playing an adapted version for the viewer. Uh, so what this is, well, Jared, this is one of your favorite games. Jared's the guy who likes board yeah, games. I, I am. I love yeah. board games. Yeah. So to expl ex explain how it works. Explain the rules. So basically, I have the cards here, accents. You guys continue your conversation. But you're not going to be knowing, we're not going to know what accents we have picked up. And we have to kind of just guess along the way what accent yes. we're trying to Yes, and I should preface convey. this. The reason, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's unfair, we will say this, even though I think you and I disagree on some issues, it's definitely unfair the way <laughs> I think how the deck is stacked against you whenever, like you said, ever you say something. Yeah. They're going to label it offensive. They're going to make sure that it comes out in a way that's offensive. So oh, no. Hopefully this is just a, this is, this is a game it's to clear. We're giving you the opportunity to, to, to clear your reputation, clearly because that's what we do here. That's what we do. Um, with utter nonsense. So what's, Jared's going to shuffle the deck. We're just going to continue our conversation. You get a card and it's either like, for example, right here it says redneck. Right? So you don't show it to me. Oh, shit. You don't show it. Well, I can't. <laughs> uh, so you should make it work for you with the sensor make button. Make it work. Um, we're going to show it to the camera, to the audience, and then I'll have to do it. And then you have to guess, for example. If I'm doing a redneck, you have to guess. I think you're a redneck. And then okay. you get yours, and Jared gets his, and All we right. have to guess. Coming over with cards. I'll All right, shuffle. so you shuffled? All right. Oh, Utter no. nonsense with Tommy Laren, like Laren Titus. Who goes first? But I'm, re I'm really Go. white. I'm really not good at you, accents, Stephen. Me and Tom will do that. Okay, so me, I go first. Yeah, you go first. You're, you're first. All right, I go first. So we have to continue this conversation. Okay, can you, can you zoom on that? Which camera does it matter? Uh, do that one here. Let me see. Uh, eh. Hey, do this one. Do this. Do this camera. Other one. Oh, jeez. Don't let me go. see it. No, you can't see it. Look away. Ah. Uh, we're getting Look it. Look away. We're getting it. All right, there you go. There we there go. There we go. Okay. Gosh, you look shiny on that camera. That's the problem with these. Uh, that's the problem with sweating. That's true. Um, so we're we're talking like we were talking about that back there. You know, I don't think you have a huge fan base out there when uh, you're talking about deep dish. Chicago. As a matter of, there you go. Chicago oh. in. Boom. She got it. Good. That was very quick. That was very quick. Very quick. You said deep dish. Yeah, well, that's kind of cheating. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Jared, now it's not good. Jared's turn. Okay. All right. You got to draw for me? Oh, you want to just draw for you? you? Okay, it's not good. Jared's turn. All right. So you can't look so here. I'm going to have to, what am I going to have to show it to this one? Uh, show it to me over here. Okay. All right. So this I is not. It. I see it. Okay. Okay. You can see it. Now let me show the it. audience. For those, and I don't want to show uh, them how I much I've... Uh, we're not prepared for this kind of stuff. Wait, technology. we're not prepared. All right, hold on a second. What? There? There? All right. Oh, damn it. All right. Right there. Wait, hold on a second. Right there. there you go. There you go. This is a nightmare. Boom. Okay, that's the one to do. Boom. That's the one to do. Right there. Okay. All right. So, not get Jared. Continue our conversation. All right, mate. That's I'm going to say... Already, this is offensive. What? I gotta say, I, think I gotta say the US... words a couple times because they use that a lot. It's Australian. It's Australian. Oh! Oh! All right. I'm that not good, good at accents. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sweat. I'm yeah. gonna, it's well, like we said, here, I, we I'm always sweat. think that it's it's uh it's unfair how people have painted you. Oh, this should and help. Take things out of context. This should help. So now it's time for Tom Loren. Uh, you have to pick, pick that card. Don't show me. <sighs> show the camera. Where should she show the camera? Not right to your camera, right there. You're gonna show it to that camera right there. I'm nervous for this. <laughs> Let's just play the game. We have to show that you know how to have a good time. <laughs> show the camera. Show the camera. I can't see it. Not good, dude. Oh, you have it. We got it. We got it. Okay. We got it. I don't know. <laughs> it could be anything. Throw that card away. This okay, is a real so board we're game. talking. We're having a good conversation. We're talking about the show. Uh -huh. Yeah. What's what's <laughs> what? How do you feel about your? How do you feel about your first Loud with Crowder in studio experience? Yeah, I. This is going to be great for my. In, I, I, mm -hmm. Jared, not good. Jared's the one who set up this game. This came. I just opened the package. The one that's crossed out is far less controversial. Let's just put that out there. Someone's crossing something out? Not yeah. Okay, Jared. And they're but gonna... you know what? I don't make the rules. I just call them. So we do have to play by the card that you yeah. show the audience. Yeah. This is random. <laughs> so we're talking. We're having a good time. How's the weather out there? We'll, we'll improvise. How's the, how's how's the weather? The... How do I even? I mean, everything... how, is the, uh, how is your trip? How is the world doing? Today. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't even so, know. I don't even know how to verbalize. What did this. you do? I don't know. Try, try. Knock, knock. You, you gotta answer the door. I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. All right. Next okay, round. Next round. Throw that card right. All right. Okay. We'll, okay, right. we'll, we'll let you build this. <laughs> These are all. We you... get, like I said, we want it. We want to. Um, we'll give you a fair shake. All right. This one. This is me. All right, you can't see. You can't see okay. it, right? We're good. Okay, so you see it. All right, I see this one. Okay. Um, well, let's role play. You can just ask me. Just put me in any scenario. I put you in any yeah, scenario? Yeah, any scenario that you want. Jeez, scen you're just putting me on the spot right now. Um, you put me on the spot. That's very hard. It's a hard place to be. <laughs> I don't want to build the wall because the wall, when I climb, it makes me fall down. <laughs> You sound like I don't even I don't even you know. You don't which even one, know. What? Ah, you don't even know. Does, wait, 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 wait. Does Donald Trump oh. does he mean what he said? Does, does, oh, does, does okay. Donald Trump does he mean what he's saying? <laughs> Mexican. There you go. Oh! It's not a trick question. These are easy. All right. Your yeah, your turn. All right, I not get Jared's turn. You, yeah. You're pretty good at guessing. I'm okay. good. At, I'm good at that. You but are good speak, at guessing. I mean, I already have a South Dakota accent. You guys are already. Oh, is that you're from South Dakota? Yeah. Yeah, Fargo was a good film. All right. That's North Dakota. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest, sweetheart. Those Dakotas are inconsequential aside from fracking. Okay. Right. that pipeline there. That's true. All right. There we go. Oh. Okay. So this one. So time to run. Crap. Is this, is this? Oh, oh no, 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 no! You're gonna reveal it if you say it. I don't know which one this is. Um, is this the? Let's go. Oh, oh, let's go with. Oh. Let's go with the international version. You were doing uh, the daughter. No, 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 no. You don't know you anything. You were Indian. Oh, ah. you already guessed it because Jared's an idiot. Womada, womada, womada. I'd, I'd rather act out these. <laughs> is than that Indian? Indian? That's nine, nine, womada, nine. Womada, womada, that's the only I know. That's the only womada, womada, Indian womada. by nine, way nine. of Zambia. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now it's time for. I uh, got that. Let's now. I'd rather act. Can I act out my card? Here we go. I'm Again, not good we want to. This is a fun game, Tommy. It's know, all in good fun, and we want to make sure we're giving you the. I might. Act, I might change the rules clear. and act out mine. Okay, let's let the audience see what this is. <laughs> I can't. I can't see it. All right, can't see it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. How are you? Do uh, you're a doctor. Doctor, I, bet, I don't my, think this is a doctor. My elbow <laughs> hurts. <laughs> I don't know why it's not a doctor. That, yeah, you're vilifying an entire group of people. We haven't had anyone group yet that could not be a doctor. No. Mexicans, Indians, maybe Chicagoans. Usually they're imported. Uh, but yeah. So we don't. 
That's, that's that, these don't represent our people. Okay. <clears throat> Doctor, my elbow hurts. Ow. I don't even know what a person would say in this. The... Um, okay. You Doctor, know what, what do you really do for a living? <laughs> I, can't I can't say this. I can answer that question, but I can't say that. You can't say it? No. Damn it. No. All right, fine. Let's get you some more cards here. Let me see. I need to shuffle better. Rest. What? I need to shuffle better next time. If I was, I All would right. say what I would say if I were this person. I would say, I'm not going to say it in an accent, I'm just going to say a phrase. Well, hold on a second, because sometimes the phrase is worse than the accent. No. Probably. <laughs> okay. I'm, Let me guess. my card. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to. Yeah, the audience knows They the know it. Okay. You know it too. Probably. I don't know the card. If I were just to say, Black Lives Matter. Um, uh. It could be Al Sharpton. It could be Al Sharpton. Sean King. It's not a person. Though. It's, it's, a, it's a group oh, of people. Oh, it's a theme. Okay. It's a group of people. A black person? Okay, close enough. Well, is that close? That's all it is. It says black. No. I feel like that's yeah. not in, in no, the vein of the no, game. No, it's a single mom from Detroit. <laughs> How'd that get in there? That's horrible. Jared. All right, not gay, Jared. You're horrible to our guests. She made some We're horrible inferences there. All right, well, that's inferences. not fair. Come on, Look. let's give her. Let's give her. Let's give you one more. One more, more shot. I have to go again. I think I don't think it was my turn. Well, but yeah, but it's because you didn't do you didn't do the voice. Yeah, I gotta commit. The show it's the camera. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So what do we have here? <laughs> Not gay Jared is the one in charge of this game. He's fired. Is he fired? Should he be fired? You should be fired. You, you this definitely is fair. should be. This is right. my neighbors are going to be. Fair. Hey, it's getting warm in here. I'm sweating. Can blank help me? This person cannot help you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this person that cannot. doesn't that doesn't help me guess at all. Um, okay, they can't help me if I'm hot. What if I'm cold? Ooh, I'm cold. I'm always cold, but I can't do this one either. You can't? No, I don't even know how to. I couldn't even. If I that would be more insulting for me to verbalize what this person <laughs> is. This this group of people would be more insulted. Okay, not kidding. What is it that you put in there? What is it? What is it that he put in there? Airline hijacker. Well, you could have just got. You know what? Here. I could have been that guy on the United I will say, flight. You do. You do the Facebook. I, you know, I can help you as a someone who's been in comedy for a while. This one, if you were looking for it out, you could have just been uh, Dr. David Dow. Is it, who's that? Is that the? He was the Asian who went the, on the United, flight. He, he didn't necessarily hijack the cockpit, but he hijacked everyone's pleasant flying experience. Yeah. That, so if, that if, was some. If you'd have just gone. Oh, I tried gay sex for Percocet. I wouldn't like Dr. David Dow. You hijacked an airplane. I didn't know that guy's name. I just called him the guy on the United flight that got... Screamed. His yeah. ass beat. Ah! Yes. Ah! Play that again. It never gets old. Ah! Ah! Have you ever made that sound as a grown adult? No. Well... Do you think that's the sound before they got violent with him? Did they really get violent, though? I no, mean, see, that's I okay. I, uh, then we're tracking, because we were one of the only shows who were like, you know what, I feel like this guy was, like there were three other people who were escorted from the plane, and they were totally fine. Here's my deal on that, and we have to go. Yeah. But here's the thing. If someone tells you to get out of your seat, you get out of your seat, and then you deal with it legally. Trust me, I know. Deal with it legally <laughs> later. You don't fight. Like, can you imagine in my situation, if I was like, yeah. I'm not going. Yeah. I'm standing right get here. Get out of your new seat. No. This seat is cold. I have this already. <laughs> Why my butt pad? I've cut, <laughs> my custom orthotic butt pad is here, and I am here to stay. Where you my know, butt I pad really, goes, I I do want to cover that, though. I know okay. we don't have a lot of time, but I think it's just important. I don't think I can get in trouble for this. I think I can explain this butt pad. <laughs> I think I can explain it for those that think. Okay. Because to me, when that, that was came talked out, about, people did mention that you had a butt pad. When that came out, and people said that I'm a diva for having a butt pad, I I almost lost it because here's the thing, I am always cold. I'm a cold person. Men tend to like things a lot colder because you don't want to sweat. Whatever you probably were. You could have told us because we have a cold in the studio. No, said, are I'm you cold? Okay. You're like I'm fine. But I'm but I deal with things. See, that's I acclimate. So here's the okay. deal. I was always cold at my former place of employment, I was always cold. So instead of demanding it be warmer because it's just not gonna get that much warmer when it's already been set to a low temperature, I yeah. thought, okay, how can I best acclimate to the situation? So what did I do? I used a heated lava pad that people use at football Wait, games. What's a, what's a lava pad? It's what you heat up, 
to sit at like a cold football game or a cold sporting event, maybe outside at a parade, you okay. to warm yourself, right? So it's like hand So there warmers. was a butt pad. There was a butt pad. But to, to say that this made me a diva, it's like I sat on that butt pad because I was so cold. It's like, what can I possibly do to make myself more comfortable right. while also not upsetting the ecosystem? I will just sit on a heated butt pad. So for, I mean, if that makes me a diva, if I guess you, I'm a diva. If you want a butt pad, we can get you a butt pad. We I could have easily before this. Keep it like asked. five degrees in here. Yeah, we could have gotten a butt pad. I'm, I mean, but I'm okay. I can deal. It's just day. You're okay. Day His nipples could cut glass. We keep it very cold in here. We go by the David Letterman, and I, if I, yeah. But you know, I will say this: you've been extremely accommodating. Uh, you and I have never actually spent time together. We've always done it by Skype. So mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know. I, you know, I don't know what to expect. Just like I think a lot of people don't know what to expect with me. Um, and she has been very acquiescent. You know how acquiescent? You want to know? By the way, Facebook.com/slash Tommy Laren L A. H-R-E-N. That's where there people can go. follow you. And uh, just to tell you how accommodating she has been today. That drink? Pill Cosby. We'll be back <laughs> for final thoughts after this. Thank you so much. It was so sweet. Drink up. Drink up. Many of you are still unaware of the items available at louderwithcrowdershop.com. Not only do they make you look and feel better, but they serve a multitude of purposes. Like our socialism is for fag shirts, assisting in identifying potential allies. I found that shirt very offensive. I think it's pretty funny. Or our Bad Umbrace Firearm t-shirt, helping you know who to avoid. Am I to take that shirt to mean that you support some kind of firearm registry? Or this one. Hey look, it's my face. I hate it. Though louderwithcrowdershop.com isn't for everyone. But can I buy the mug from the shop without joining the mug club? No! The rest of you, check out the merchandise at louderwithcrowdershop.com today. Uh, all right, glad to be back. Uh, thanks so much to Tommy Loren. Very nice girl. Very nice. Very nice girl. Uh, glad to have her on the show. Even though, like we've talked about, you know, I don't necessarily uh, agree with everything that uh, she always has to say, or sometimes, uh, but, you know, who cares? Yeah. And that, honestly, I will say, this is, we, we talked about this earlier, concludes, uh, hashtag free credit, those watching on CRTV Mug Club members, uh, thank you. But um, what a week. And first off, thanks to Matt, who came in. And uh, pinch mm -hmm. hit. He helped edit for us. Well, that's the conclusion of the Tranny Bane saga. Uh, more jihadi bond coming up, and maybe Tranny Bane will you know leave your comments if you want more Tranny Bane could 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 rear his Z's ugly ugly head uh, somewhere in the near future. But uh, you know that requires some some editing horsepower. We've had some people come in and pinch hit and really help us this week. So we, we can't thank them enough. But think about this week. What kind of a uh, you know we have Mark Duplass, a liberal. We we talk. We have common ground, very mm -hmm. civil. Then we have Gavin McGinnis who's just a bomb thrower and hilarious, mm -hmm. about as offensive as offensive gets. Then Jordan Peterson, and what I would like to think, Professor Peterson, was a very introspective uh, conversation. I think we, 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 we went into some territory that I haven't really heard him explore on shows before, maybe mm -hmm. in his lectures. And then Tommy Lahren, which was just, you know, uh, folly. It was. <laughs> well, it was folly because, we, you know, she has certain things she can't talk about, obviously, sure. given the situations, legal situations, and we wanted to be as tactful as possible and, and respect um, respect her privacy. You know, we do try to do that with this show. I, I, like we were talking about with Jordan Peterson this week, I think that's something that really stuck with me, where he was talking about how uh, compassion in the short term isn't necessarily the most loving thing to do, but being honest is. And he used the example of talking about a, a, a child. I think it's the same thing with, with, with guests, with people on the show. If you watch this show, we don't change our tune when we have guests on the show if we've disagreed with them. Now, we'll always be respectful. Uh, so we may change, I guess, the tact in which we approach someone directly because we need to give them a platform to respond. But um, for a show that really doesn't value civility above honesty, Looking back at this week, that's a that's a pretty diverse uh, array of guests. Yeah, I, I don't know any other show where you you would see that. Are you and, wearing lipstick? No, I have chapped lips though. I've been licking them. They're like they feel like they're on fire. I just know the whole audience is going. I, I hear what you're saying, but is he is Stephen wearing lipstick? Well, you know Not what? That would be that shocking. It's probably because you altered the lighting for since Tommy. No, was your there. lips are with my own eyes. My lips look red. Yeah. Very red. 
Really? Like you've been blowing Elmo. You know I go blow Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> you know we don't talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't talk about that. He's doing hard time, and I was the one who put him away, see? Boy, was that disappointing. I remember I, I was late to that documentary, remember the, uh, Becoming Elmo? Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, really sad stuff. I watched it, and you talk, you know, the childhood, and you're like, this guy just, he just, he speaks to the puppets, and he brings joy to these kids' lives, and it, I watched it late, and I walked out, and I told my wife, I said, hey, I just watched this great documentary, it was so inspiring, Becoming Elmo. Yeah, you know he molested kids, right? What? <laughs> I thought he did the opposite of that. Hey, Steven, you hear a prince died? I've, uh, I, well, thank you now. You're welcome. Now I've been made aware. But um, I will tell you this, I, I hope, you know, Tommy Run talked about being authentic, Kind of mentioned talking points. We have a structure in our show. If you look at our pitch meetings, we have structure to make sure that what we say is accurate. So for questioning Elizabeth Warren, for talking, it could be about female circumcision, we are making sure that you have references available so that you're not just taking, you don't have to take my word for it, LeVar Burton. No, we'll take the word of the six-year-old on the coloring <laughs> book. Gosh, reading rainbow. But uh, that's how we create the program. So we do have structure. We have to make sure that we're accurate. And we have people on the team who, some are libertarian, some are more Christian conservative. We don't have any leftists in the show. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to try and like false virtue signal. No. We have everyone. No, we don't have everyone. Um, we also don't have, don't have an Indonesian. Don't like them. So we, 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 we make sure we have the facts correct. But beyond that, we really are open to, to learning and hearing different views. And, I, and as far as authentic, we learn a lot in this show. Sure. When I sit down and I, and I talk with, with, uh, Dr. Peterson, you know, I learn. When I sit down and I, I talk with, uh, with Mark Duplass and I hear a different point of view, I learn as to where he's coming from, as to maybe seeing things from a different point of view. Uh, when we have Tommy Loren on kind of talking about the situation, some of the controversy, and she's able to express her opinion on her own, you know, in her own words, I learn. Some things get to be clarified. And so I do think there's something kind of contagious about that. I hope, um, for me, when I grew up and I would watch these shows, I'd always love watching shows where I would learn with the person. That's something that I thought sure. with, with Steve Irwin was really contagious because you could tell oh, so true. he was so into it. And even though he was teaching, he was learning something. Yeah. Like, for example, Black, Black Mambas Go for the Balls. He learned that he learned the that. hard way. And you could see that it was authentic, the terror on his face when he grabbed a snake and he was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we really do. I mean, we, you know, we, we make sure our sources are correct, our facts are correct. Yeah. But the, the phrase, I should have done that, appears... Often, probably. Yeah, probably on, the, on, on this program. On this program. Yeah, yeah, often after after the show, we go, Ooh. "Wow, what do you think about that segment?" Uh, that might be the one where they get us. <laughs> that might be the media matters highlight reel. But you learn, That's and I, true. I really do. You know, I, I look forward to, to coming in here and getting these different guests on and actually learning with them. Absolutely. And uh, and I know we've talked even after the show where we'll go out to dinner or something. We'll say, "Hey, do you remember? Remember when 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 whoever it is? Remember when Boss Rudin said that? Remember when Owen uh, Benjamin said this? Yeah, that really you know that really made me think." And we'll have conversations after the show. Yeah. That'll be longer than the show. We should have talked about that on the show. I feel like it's so different from a lot of other talking heads on TV because a lot of times you just watch their interviews and it's like they are trying to lead the person down the path of. This is where I want to get you. I don't want to learn. I want right. you. To, I want you to come over. I want you to agree with me at the end of this thing or something. Yeah. And I feel like we really, especially with like Jordan B. Peterson this week, we, we go down the show. Okay, where? Let's learn something from you. What kind of insight do you have that we maybe you know something we missed? Yeah, there could be something that we missed. I mean, of course, it's okay to have an opinion or try and convince oh, someone if we think that they're wrong. But uh, yeah, I mean, having worked on in, in cable news. And, and having worked elsewhere, it really is you have a certain rigid set of points because these are acceptable. You know, cheerleading yeah. for this political figure. Never concede any ground. No, never concede any ground. And cheerleading this political figure is acceptable right now. Don't ever question him because that's going to hurt our ratings. And you see that right now. <laughs> and then you put yourself in a box. You, but when you put yourself in a ratings box all the time on just being beholden to one group of people, then all of a sudden you can't stray out of it at all. And so I really, you know, my dad always told me about that. I just always want to be someone who is learning. And he, he said that if you can learn something new every single day, every single day, let's call it two. You can learn two new things every single day. But one thing every day, that's 365. What's 365 mm -hmm. times two? I don't know. Seven something. It's true. <laughs> that's a, Apparently math isn't among <laughs> yeah. multiplication tables. My additions are not something that I learn. In but it can be done. Don't let, but don't it, let Stephen deter you. But it if you can do done. that every day. Yeah. I mean, listen, we write out jokes, obviously. And that's one thing, too. A lot of the podcasts yeah. were like, man. One thing, too, that I will say is, you know, it's not the strongest animal that adapts. It's the, the, it's not the strongest animal that survives. It's the animal that it can adapt. Yeah. People go, man, podcast, it's just nothing, it's just pure conversation. The difference is now it's gotten to the point where everyone does that. So conversations yeah. go nowhere. And you can have a bunch of stoners just sitting there 
agreeing with each other making no sense. <laughs> sure. like, we don't write jokes, Unless man. you're also stoned. We just are funny. No, no, Brilliant. we actually sit down. We appreciate the audience. We try to, every single show, write some jokes, create some sketches, make you laugh, yeah. make sure that you can go to bed being entertained. That way, if you have a guest, a lot of times people see a guest and they say, oh, I don't want to watch uh, Dr. Peterson or I don't want to watch Tommy Lahren. People don't like every single guest. So we do. We take some effort, we structure that portion of the show, and then just with guests want to learn with you. And I hope that you guys can see that, can sense that authenticity. I hope that you saw that this week for people who weren't necessarily Mug Club members. It's the consistency. I'm not selling this program to you, but it's the consistency, I would say, coming in here and the quality of guests that we get on this program. For me, it's the consistency of every day having different points of view mm -hmm. that certainly has helped me grow. If you think about when you and I started, I mean, on, on terrestrial radio, taking a chance, how many guests we've had and how many people oh, we've met. Um, you know, we have Gary Sinise, then we'll have Andrew Bogut, and then we'll have Dinesh D'Souza, then we have Ted Cruz. I mean, it's and just... the tranny who won't stop writing. <laughs> yeah, the tra and then the one tranny guest who will not stop writing us. But think, genuinely think about that. Over two years, how much we have learned. It's true, it's true. I, I was trying to think about that even just since we started The Daily Show. I mean, we're in episode, this is episode 175? Yeah. We've done like, like, like 77 episodes. That's a lot of information, a lot of people we've talked to, a lot of uh, you know, paths that have intersected yeah. since the start of just the Daily Program, which is... It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is nutty to think about. And um, hopefully, you know, when you think of all the, the many, 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 many millions of people, some lives are touched. And sometimes that's the thing. As long as you keep learning, it, you never know when that moment's going to occur where something that you've learned can help somebody. I've had that where I'm just like, oh, you know what? I just learned this last week. And you're talking with someone and they go, oh, that's exactly what I needed to hear. But if you don't have enough arrows in your quiver, if you've just got a bunch of talking points, if you're watching people deliver red meat who are just telling you what you want to hear, that's not a way to grow. And more importantly, that's not a way to help other people. It's not a way, if we go back to what uh, Dr. Benjamin, Benjamin, oh, I keep saying Owen Benjamin, Dr. Oh, Peterson. Benjamin. Owen Benjamin, Jordan Peterson. They're so, it's the syllables. If you look at what Dr. Peterson was saying, you know, it starts with strong individuals, strong families, strong communities before government. So if you believe in, in, in personal responsibility, if you believe in limited government, guess what? It really does start with you strengthening yourself as an individual absolutely and you cannot get that only sticking around with people who agree with you you cannot get it trying to tear down anyone who uh, expresses an idea that you don't like or you cannot get it trying to tear down anyone who doesn't follow dear leader whoever that may be at that time your political savior or your cultural savior or yeah. your idol you cannot grow and you cannot be of help to other people in your daily life. And we talked about that all the time. It's just daily connection with people, talking with people about these issues that you learn about, making sure to engage people in conversation. Half the time you'll realize like, people haven't thought of a lot of these issues. Mm -hmm. People watching this program out there right now, you are in a minority to look through the world in this lens and actually care. Mm. Sometimes they give you the bird. Sometimes they give you the bird. But you are in a small minority to sit here this week and listen to the views of Mark Duplass and then Gavin McGinnis and Dr. Peterson and Tommy Loren and consistently watch throughout and interact. There aren't many people who do that. And, and, and that feels good because you know what? I think people who do that, people who are exposed to more and more points of view, and I think we really aim to do that on the show. And if, we, if, if, if we're missing it, please always let us know. That's a good thing we're always accessible. But gosh, you will be so much better equipped to better serve your community as a strong individual. And of course, your family, if you have kids, you know, that's not me, you gotta be terrified of me. They're also yeah. sticky. I don't, like, I don't like going on a couch when a kid's in there. Between the cushions, you never know what you'll find. But you can strengthen yourself as an individual, family, communities, and that has to start with every single day. Every single day, just learn something new. We're doing it, so you can watch along with us and learn something new, and you might hear a few, uh, might hear a few Im immature jokes because sometimes learning new information can be wildly uncomfortable. By the way, there's no show next Monday. It is my first long weekend in ever, and uh, we will see you back next Tuesday for those who've joined Mug Club. See you then.